In the past, Type-C power delivery has never been super useful for gaming laptops as they simply provided insufficient power to run anywhere near the hardware's capabilities. So dropping the chunky power adapter was never a viable option, as you would considerably limit the potential of your gaming laptop. However, this year's G15 supports up to 100 watt power delivery, which leaves us a bit more headroom when pushing the dedicated graphics card during demanding gaming sessions. So now, to help us find out if gaming is feasible via USB-C, I'll be charging the G15 via Sateki's 100 watt charger, as well as the base US Type-C to Type-C cable. The G15 I'm testing with has the Ryzen 9 5900HS and the RTX 3080. To give us a rough baseline of how much power the G15 requires while gaming at 60 frames per second, I first tried playing Cyberpunk 2077 using only the battery. Nvidia Battery Boost was set to quality, which allows for a maximum frame rate of 60 while being unplugged. Screen brightness and keyboard lighting were both set to the laptop's highest during this test. After about 5 minutes in game, we can see that the GPU consumes a peak power of around 50 watts and the CPU around 20 watts, which combined is well below the 100 watt threshold. But we also need to factor in other components of the laptop that also demand energy such as the display and speakers. So when looking at the total system discharge rate, the G15 is now consuming almost 100 watts to play Cyberpunk 2077. So how do these results differ once you plug in the Type-C cable? The difference is surprisingly large, with the peak power draw up to 72 watts for the GPU and 32 watts for the CPU. Having said that, the laptop is still able for the most part to replenish some energy back into the battery. Frame rate remains at a consistent 59 to 60 FPS, with the same in game settings as before. This might seem fantastic that PD is finally able to provide sufficient power to play games, but that really is not the full story. Because of the inconsistent charging rates due to varying demands from the CPU and GPU, the battery is constantly being fed differing amounts of power. For example, in less graphically demanding situations, the battery would be able to charge since the system is not using all of the supplied energy. However, as soon as the gameplay becomes more graphically intense, the 100 watt provided would not be able to power the system components and charge the device at the same time. This therefore means the laptop could potentially charge and discharge multiple times during a gaming session. This constant fluctuation of charge rates can be detrimental to the health of a battery, as I've already discovered 0.4% of wear after only around 2 hours of gameplay powered by USB-C. This is very concerning once you do the maths, as 100 hours of gameplay is potentially enough to damage the battery by 20%. In addition to that, you're having to sacrifice some graphical details in order to more consistently stay under that 100 watt limit. I don't have a power meter to measure exactly how much power is being supplied to the charger, but I suspect it's not a constant 100 watts. So while gaming via USB-C is definitely feasible now with 100 watt PD, the potential damage it does to the battery far outweighs the ease of portability in my opinion. Not only are you unable to extract maximum performance out of your hardware, but you're also potentially shortening the lifespan of your precious laptop. This therefore reserves PD charging to lighter tasks, which for a gaming laptop is a nice convenience feature, but not hugely beneficial, especially when it comes to gaming. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.